News Money, Channel 602. Welcome to Business Success, I'm Chloe James. Some of the most successful businesses are born when those who have earned their stripes in the corporate sector have decided to go it alone, finding freedom and fulfilment in being their own boss. Tonight's first guest was one of the original forces at global CRM giant Salesforce. Joining as employee, wait for it, number 11, there are now about 25,000. In his nine years of the business, he built the original billing system and held a variety of executive roles in technology, marketing and strategy organisation. With more than 30 years leadership experience across financial services, product development and innovation, Carolyn Colley has a rare and intimate understanding of how companies need to pivot and accommodate the evolution of customer demands and market trends. She's here to give us the scoop. So, before we speak to my guests, a quick catch up on today's business and economic news. It's all about reporting at this time of year. Seven Group's full year profits sliding over 77% to $44.5 million, weighed down by an over $245 million hit from its share of Seven West Media's near $1 billion impairments. Also announcing the surprise sale of its West Track heavy machinery business in China, the company that sells Caterpillar branded products for $540 million. BHP investors are buoyed by its full year report. The global miner posting an underlying profit of $6.7 billion, net profit coming in at $5.89 billion US dollars, swinging to profit after last year's $6 billion loss on write downs of its US shale business and the costs associated with the fatal dam failure in the Samco mine in Brazil. Western areas full year net profit more than doubling to over $19 million. Sales revenue also higher with a strong free cash flow generation and a debt free balance sheet. Teen Zoe is widely recognised as one of the world's software as a service thought leaders, founding his company Zora in 2007. Teen has built not only one of the fastest growing SaaS companies, he's also evangelised the shift to subscription based business models, coining the subscription economy. Welcome, team, to Business Success. Thanks, Chloe. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. So let's talk about who you are, what you do. Tell me about Zora. Sure. Well, we are, uh, we're a software company, what's now known as software as a service. We deliver our applications over the Internet. What we focus on is uh, a set of billing, finance, and commerce applications, specifically for companies that have a recurring revenue or a subscription-based business models, like other SaaS companies, media companies like Fairfax Media, or HBO, or a lot of manufacturing companies that are launching services based on IoT type of technologies. Absolutely, and, and when did you start the business? I said it's, it's been around for some time. Tell me about the beginning, the early stages. We started at the end of 2007, and back then when we told people that, that one day you, know, you and I would, would, would not have to buy products anymore, instead of you just tap into services to, to fulfill our personal, professional needs, you know, people weren't quite sure this was going to happen, but now here in 2017, with services like Uber, services like Spotify, like Netflix, like Salesforce.com and Google, people really do see that the subscription-based business model is the wave of the future. I mean, it absolutely is. Uber, amazing example, Airbnb, I think of all the things that I sub right. you know, subscribe to, um, Spotify, I know that everyone sort of watching television out there is, uh, is like that now. So did you sort of see this area and think, I'm just going to go for it because I mentioned that you you obviously worked at Salesforce right at the very beginning, which is incredible given the success of that business. Tell me about that transition from from something like Salesforce to Zora. Well, so so having joined Salesforce as a as an early employee, uh, you know, pre product, pre customer, pre revenue, pre office space, my interview was actually in Mark Minial's house since there was no office at the time. Wow. And then it was about a billion dollars when, um, when, when when I left. But but really being there in the early days, I had that sense of entrepreneurism, uh, the sense of being you know close to being a founder. And so the final step to saying, you know, it's time to really start my own thing was a smaller step, if you will. And what also really helped was, was Mark Benioff, the founder and CEO of, of Salesforce.com, was very supportive and was actually one of our first investors. That's, a, that's really interesting. So you've got investment from, obviously, from the big, big business that you worked for. I think a lot of the founders I speak to, it's quite interesting. They often do come from, you know, quite this corporate background that we're talking about, and then they sort of start their own thing. This has been your experience? 
Yeah, so so it, it was a big move. I mean, I, I, I had reached out to somebody, uh, a mentor of mine that worked at, uh, but was an executive of IBM, Mike Braun, and I said, hey, Mike, you know, do you, do you think I'm ready? He asked me for a few questions, looked at me and said, you're ready to do this thing. You're ready to st start this thing. And then talking to, 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 to Mark Benioff, when he gave words of encouragement as well, uh, it definitely gave me the confidence to do this. What, what does it take to be ready, Teen? What, what does it take, do you think, as an entrepreneur to really go for it with your idea? If we're, if we're sort of thinking about giving advice to people watching the show tonight. If I try to boil it down, it, it really came down to, uh, to three things, right? It, it, you're starting a company, you're always going to make mistakes and you're always going to have to iterate, you're always going to have to course correct. And so what you need is you need a big runway, right? I, I use this uh, uh, analogy of a snowball uh, going down a hill. You want a big hill? that gives you a lot of runway, but you also want that initial idea. And when we knew that, you know, this, this whole idea of billing software being important for subscription businesses, that was something we experienced at Salesforce, and you had mentioned that we were in charge of building our own billing system. Mm -hmm. And we always knew that this wasn't something that we wanted to do. We wanted another company to take care of this. And so the idea that says this is a, a defined need in the marketplace and we can easily find that first set of customers, 10 customers, 25 customers to get us going was really important. So you have the initial snowball, you've got a big hill, and then you've got that snowpack where you can pick up more and more momentum as you go along and, and really you know, build the business over time. Do you think that's, I love, I love your chat about momentum here. Do you think that that momentum is really important when it comes to, to building something and getting those first customers on board? How do you find your first customers? How do you, how do you start with that? Well, so, so, so knowing that Salesforce.com is one of the first software as a service companies, and you know, most people think of Salesforce as having used this new technology model, right? This, this idea of cloud computing, mobile devices, the internet, if you will, to, to disrupt the, the enterprise software industry. That's certainly true, but we also talked about a very different business model, where instead of selling you the software and saying, you can now take care of it, you deal with the hardware, you deal with the maintenance, right? All those things that, you know, we don't have to do anymore and we take this for granted. But that new business model of, of, of pay-as-you-go software was just as important. And we knew that, that you know, at the very least, there would be all these other software companies that wanted to do the same thing, they would have the same problems, and we could take the experience that we had at Salesforce.com and, and that they would want to learn from it. And so, you know, the first dozen or two customers was fairly straightforward for us to get. But now, 10 years later, we've got, you know, not just Zendesk and Box and Marketo and these other software companies, but we have customers such as General Motors, such as Ford, such as Caterpillar, such as HBO, yeah. such, as, such as the Wall Street Journal. And, 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 and so you can take those early successes and really build on it as you acquire more and more customers and expand your marketplace. Well, you, I mean, you've absolutely expanded it. And, you know, it's, it's an American-founded company. You're in Australia. I'd love to talk a little bit about bringing a global business down under. Tell me about that experience and, and how you lead when you're based in San Fran as you are. Yeah, so, so I would say that, that you know, having, having helped Salesforce.com do a lot of their international expansion, you know, around that 2004, 2008 time frame, um, you know, we think that, that companies are often sort of uh, bounded by their views of geography. And if you look at customers and you look at the world, the way the world is, is interacting today, because of the internet, um, you know, the, the, the world is, is, is broken up more into language blocks, mm. if you will. So if you're an Australian company, you're a U.S. company, you're a Canadian company, a U.K. company, right? You, because you're building it, you're an English-speaking country, you're actually in all those different countries. There's an English-speaking block, as you, if you will. Mm. And so we decided to move uh, outside of the U.S. fairly quickly. And we opened offices in the U.K. and Australia. Uh, and they would find us. You know, we would have, you know, content. We would have a website in English and... and, and, and um, and the Australian customers would, would, would find us. And so we signed up a few customers and decided, look, it's time really to, to, to put a local office and, and to expand internationally. What were some of the biggest challenges when you were starting out? I want to bring it back to kind of challenges and experiences that you've had, Teen. Starting your own business, what, what were some of the tough times and how did you overcome them? Yeah, so... so um, you, you, the vision for the company, this idea that there's a subscription economy and they would need the technologies that we provide, that was pretty, you know, that stayed consistent, but there's a bunch of things you don't know, right? It, how broad the product had to be, you know, we, the product turned out, uh, it turned out the product had to be a lot broader than we thought and it acquired a lot more engineering effort, a lot more R&D. Um, and also, 
You know, the, 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 the whole idea is not just the product, but how do you actually deliver ongoing customer success? One of the, the, the key parts of the subscription economy for your subscription-based business is you need your customers to come back mm. month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year. And, and advocate, right? And advocate. Mm. And so, so really focusing on customer success, right? And, and, and making sure your customers are successful in using your technologies and they will come back was really important. Mm. And that turned out to be you know, a bit harder than, than we had thought. But, but having gone through that, this is now our core competency. This is now our competitive advantage. This is now our secret sauce. Absolutely, secret sauce. I love it. I love it. Um, what drives and inspires you in business team? What sort of has kind of driven you to this point of success that you're that you're obviously experiencing now? Well, one of the things that that, that every employee here talks about is is you know we're fortunate enough to really be part of our customer's journey. You take a step back and you look at some of the innovations like an Uber or Netflix or a Spotify, and every company is going through some sort of transformation, some sort of digital transformation, whether it's HBO going direct to the consumer, whether it's Caterpillar saying, can there be one day where we're not selling tractors anymore, but we're selling metric tons of earth moved or selling the outcome that people want, right? Or, or, or you're Fairfax and you're saying, gosh, you know, we were going to a place where, where we had no digital strategy to where, where, where our, our paywall and our subscription revenue is actually really, really successful. And, and so, so one of the great things about us is actually being part of that customer journey, having a ringside seat, if you will, for the transformations of some of the most amazing companies in the world. I mean, I mean, you absolutely are transforming them, and I love that you've spoken about the customer piece because it's just so relevant in today's society. It's all about the customer, customer experience, customer centricity. As I say, they're you know advocates for your business. Just finally wrapping up, I always love to finish on it. What do you do in your personal life, if you have one, that you see contributing to your business success? Well, we try to, uh, on a personal level, I try to keep in touch with what's going on in the world, right? So, 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 so I, I, I read a lot of newspapers, I watch a lot of movies, I read a lot of books. I think staying relevant, because when you're running these businesses, you're so tunnel focused on the business itself, it's good to just to pick up, travel the world, talk to the local folks, talk to the local uh, news, and, and really understand what's going on in the world. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you, team. Thank you so much for coming yeah. on Business Success. I think, it's, I think it's really wonderful and I love that you sort of take your personal life into, into obviously doing you know, what you love as well. Um, stay with us and we'll have more after the break. See you then. Thank you.